Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the virtue of obedience and I'll explain why it's an important virtue and what it actually means, so what the extent of obedience is that Catholics are called to. This video is uh, not a summary of one specific book, but it's rather a combination of many different sources, this time mainly doctors of the Catholic Church. The reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place is because obedience is a virtue that seems to be confusing and maybe even intimidating, because what if someone tells you to do something that you know is not the optimal thing to do? That seems to be dangerous. And as there are relatively few books that were dedicated solely on the virtue of obedience and also few videos on that topic, I decided to summarize what different authors wrote on that subject. When we think of obedience, the first thing that probably comes to mind is the obedience that children owe to their parents and maybe also the submission wives owe to their husbands. But if you're not a child or a wife or maybe a religious person who vowed obedience, chances are that you have never really reflected on this virtue. In this video, I'm not really going to address any specific situations where obedience is needed, but it's rather a general presentation of that virtue, which you can use, of course, to help you discern specific situations situations in your life. Before I dive into the topic, I want to make clear that we must not obey when we are commanded to do something sinful. Let's start with the question why obedience is important and how important it is in comparison to other virtues. There are multiple ways to deduce that obedience is a particularly important virtue. The first one I mentioned in my video last week, where I quoted St. Alphonsus, who said that sanctity consists in perfect fulfillment of God's will, and the surest means of knowing God's will is obedience towards our lawful superiors. Another reason why obedience is so important and valuable, as St. Alphonsus also explains, is because it's the greatest sacrifice that a soul can make to God. St. Thomas writes that nothing is dearer to us than the liberty of our will. To quote St. Alphonsus, he who gives his property to God by distributing it among the poor, his honor by patiently bearing contempt, his body by fasts and penitential works, gives him a part of himself. But he who offers God his will by subjecting it to obedience gives him all that he has, and can truly say, My Lord, after I have given thee my will, I have nothing more to give. As St. Gregory says, By the other virtues we give to God what belongs to us. By obedience we give him ourselves. The same saint teaches that all the other virtues follow in the train of obedience and by its influence are preserved in the soul. It is a delusion, therefore, to imagine that we can do anything better than that which is prescribed by obedience. And he also explains it is more meritorious to pick up a straw from the ground out of obedience than from self-will to make a long meditation or scourge ourselves to blood. From this follows that another reason why obedience is so important is because it's a rather interior virtue. As we've just heard, by obeying we sacrifice our will, so that's clearly an interior mortification. And as St. Francis de Sales explains in his introduction to the devout life, we have to focus on the virtues that are most excellent and not the ones that are most visible or showy. In his own words, thus the common run of men ordinarily value temporal almsgiving more than spiritual, and think more of fasting, exterior discipline and bodily mortification than of meekness, cheerfulness, modesty and other interior mortifications, which nevertheless are far better. Do you then, my daughter, choose the best virtues, not those which are most highly esteemed, the most excellent, not the most visible, the truest, not the most conspicuous? The final reason why obedience is so important, as St. Catherine of Siena writes in the dialogue, is because a soul is obedient in proportion to her humility and humble in proportion to her obedience. As I often mention in my videos, pride is the deadliest of all deadly sins, and so humility can be considered the most important virtue. If you're interested to learn why that is the case, I made two videos on humility so far, so feel free to check them out. I hear you thinking, what has obedience to do with humility? Let me give you an example. So, you might have heard of the spiritual fruits of the rosary. Basically, by meditating on each of the mysteries of the rosary, you try to acquire a specific spiritual fruit, so a virtue. Now, let's take the joyful mysteries, for example, specifically the first joyful mystery, so the Annunciation. Just to make sure that everyone is on the same page here, the Annunciation is the story where the angel Gabriel visits Mary and tells her that she will conceive Jesus while remaining a virgin. Mary's first reaction is to ask the angel how it is possible to conceive a child without a husband, so she doesn't understand what is going to happen to her. 
And after the angel gives her an explanation, she gives the famous answer, Behold, I am a handmaid of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. That is Luke 1, 38. Long story short, Mary obeys. Now, what is the spiritual fruit of this mystery? One might think that it's obedience, because the whole story is about obedience, but the spiritual fruit of this mystery is actually humility. You see, obedience and humility are closely connected. Keith Nestor explains this in his new book about the Rosary in the following way. Mary didn't understand how all this would work, but she obeyed. This type of obedience takes humility. When God reveals His plans for us, we must set aside our plans. We must humble ourselves before whatever God asks of us. Let it be to me according to thy word. The mystery that has obedience as its spiritual fruit is actually the presentation in the temple. And the reason why this mystery is about obedience is because technically the presentation in the temple wasn't necessary, as Mary wasn't made impure by Jesus' birth, so she didn't need the purification in the temple, and Jesus was the Son of God, so he didn't need to be consecrated to God in the temple, as he was already consecrated by the virtue of his nature. So even though the presentation wasn't technically necessary, Mary and Joseph still obeyed the law of Moses. Last but not least, I'd like to add that obedience is important because it's closely connected to love. One could say that obedience is the expression of love because we know that God is love, and so his will is love, and we know that obedience is the most certain way of fulfilling God's will, as said before. This means that by obeying, we love. The connection between love and obedience can be also found in various quotes from scripture, like for example, 1 John 5, 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. And also John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. And John 14, 23-24, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. We know that loving God is the greatest of all commandments, as can be read in Matthew 22, 37 to 38. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And so by obeying we love, and by loving we fulfill the greatest of all commandments. I'd also like to quote St. Catherine of Siena, who described the relationship between those virtues as follows. Wherefore Charity, the mother of patience, has given her a sister to obedience, and so closely united them together that one cannot be lost without the other. Either you have them both, or you have neither. This virtue has a nurse who feeds her, that is, true humility. Therefore, a soul is obedient in proportion to her humility, and humble in proportion to her obedience. This humility is the foster mother and nurse of Charity, and with the same milk she feeds the virtue of obedience. Now, to summarize why obedience is so important. First, because it's the surest way to practice uniformity with God's will. Second, because it's a sacrifice of our will, which is the most precious thing we have. Third, because it's an interior mortification, because of its close connection to humility. And fifth, because obedience is the expression of love. Now let's get into the nitty-gritty of things, namely, what does obedience actually mean, and to what extent are Catholics called to practice obedience? Here I'd like to quote St. Francis de Sales in his Introduction to the Devout Life. There are two kinds of obedience, one necessary, the other voluntary. The first includes a humble obedience to your ecclesiastical superiors, whether pope, bishop, curate, or those commissioned by them. You are likewise bound to obey your civil superiors, king and magistrates, as also your domestic superiors, father, mother, master, or mistress. Such obedience is called necessary, because no one can free himself from the duty of obeying these superiors, God having appointed them severally to bear rule over us. Therefore do you obey their commands as of right, but if you would be perfect, follow their counsels, and even their wishes, as far as charity and prudence will allow. Obey as to things acceptable, as when they bid you eat or take recreation, for although there may be no great virtue in obedience in such a case, there is a great harm in disobedience. Obey in things indifferent, as concerning questions of dress, coming and going, singing or keeping silence, for herein is a very laudable obedience. Obey in things hard, disagreeable and inconvenient, and therein lies very perfect obedience. Moreover, obey quietly, without answering again, promptly, without delay, cheerfully, without reluctance. And above all, render a loving obedience for his sake, who became obedient even to the death of the cross for our sake. 
who, as St. Bernard says, chose rather to resign his life than his obedience. So in summary, that means that it's necessary to obey when a superior commands you to do something. And if you want to reach perfection, also obey in situations where obedience isn't necessary. So for example, when someone gives you a counsel. St. Teresa of Avila, for example, took a vow of special obedience to a pious priest in addition to her vow of obedience to her superiors, which is an example of voluntary obedience. Of course, obedience ends with sin, as mentioned at the beginning of this video. The saints hardly ever talked about this because for them this was obvious. For example, St. Alphonsus wrote that it is hardly necessary to say that servants are not bound to obey when they are commanded to do what God forbids. This is, by the way, a quote from the book that I reviewed last week, 12 Steps to Holiness and Salvation. But if you, for example, want to fast and your spiritual director or confessor forbids you to do so, you should obey. Because in this case, you want to do something good, so fasting, and if your confessor forbids you to do that good, you still have to obey. Trent Horn discusses that in the video about how the lady doctors teach us obedience in the midst of scandal. We don't obey because our superiors necessarily make better decisions than we would. This becomes apparent if we look at religious people and their vow of obedience. It becomes clear that obedience is not practiced only because the superior really knows better. There is no guarantee that the abbess of a convent makes better decisions than the nuns that have to obey her. Often people are canonized as saints whose superiors are not canonized. The point of obedience is not that your superiors always know better than you or that they are holier than you, but the point of obedience is that it's an opportunity for you to sacrifice the most precious thing you have, your will. That's been it for today. I hope you liked the video. See you next week. God bless and bye!